Hello and welcome to Squeezing the Most Out of Battery Life Using Modern MCUs. I'm Jacob Beningo, the lecturer for this course and series. Basically what we're going to talk about in this session, uh, this is how we prepare the, the Freescale Freedom Board, the KL25Z, uh, how we set up that development kit to perform low power measurements. So let's dive in and take a look. This is the KL25Z Freedom Board. Uh, this is based on a, a Freescale Kinetis L microcontroller. It has a ARM Cortex M0 Plus core inside of it. Pretty neat little device. Uh, the development kit itself uh, costs less than $20, but it, it comes with a number of features that first we want to familiarize ourselves with. Uh, first, to start off, uh, let's start in the lower left hand corner. It contains an open SDA debugger uh, and emulator. So this area right here, if you want to program the development kit, you would plug your USB cord in right there, and it has a nice onboard debugger ready and available for you to start debugging your system. Now, in order to do that, uh, you will want to update the onboard OpenSDA application. By default, when you first plug it in, it's going to come up and load as a mass storage device. What you're going to want to do is go through and uh, first, hold down this reset button here, located on the left hand side of the uh, board. You'll hold that down, apply power uh, through the, uh, by plugging in the USB cable to the OpenSDA. And what'll happen is it'll, it'll initiate uh, a USB mass storage device in a bootloader mode. And from that mode, you can open up an HTML document that is entitled uh, OpenSDA.htm. It'll take you to a website where you can then download uh, one, a driver packet, but two, where you can download other OpenSDA applications. Within that package, there's one for the uh, for, for basically performing uh, MSD and debugging uh, using uh, the Freedom KL25Z. You take that particular file, you copy it to the mass storage device, unplug OpenSDA, and when you plug it back in, it will be ready for you to be able to uh, execute it as a uh, debugger. So keep that in mind, one extra step that you have to do, not a big deal, it is in the lab materials as well on uh, the steps you need to follow to set that up. Then we have on, on the upper left, standard USB. This is USB that goes directly into the Kinetis L microcontroller, which is located in the center of the board. We then also have a unpopulated area for a single wire debugger. This is where you could connect uh, an external debugger such as maybe a, uh, a Kyle U-Link or an IAR iJet or some other type of emulator. So keep this in mind, it's uh, fairly useful to do, especially if you want to do low power optimizations uh, using a uh, IAR iJet or iScope. Then there's also going to be some uh, some other, other useful features here on board. There's an accelerometer located here uh, just below the microprocessor. There's also a tricolor LED. As I mentioned, this is the, the Kinetis L part, and there's even a, a capacitive touch layer um, right here on the right-hand side of the development kit. And then, of course, there's some useful expansion, which is located here at the top and the bottom of the board. You may find that it would be useful to go out and uh, purchase expansion headers for the board and get those soldered in. Uh, as we'll discuss, you're probably also going to want to get some standard 100,000th uh, male headers, breakaways, that we can then populate the other, there's some other two pin headers that we're going to want to uh, put together here as well. So this board is uh, well populated. You may even want to buy the, uh, the SAMTEC connector for the, the, the JTAG. You can find uh, all of this, the, the part numbers are within the lab materials. And also if you were to go to, for example, DigiKey's website and you look for the Freedom Board KL25Z, it's also going to, as other products, recommend those items to you. Okay, modifications that we may want to make to our Freedom Board. We may want to go and cut the SWD clock trace. Seems like a crazy thing to do, but hear me out. By default, the OpenSDA, OpenSDA on board is going to be connected to the clock pin on the Kinetis L microcontroller. There is under J11, there is a trace here that's connecting and bridging this jumper together. So the OpenSDA is always connected directly to the Kinetis L microcontroller. If we want to use an external debugger uh, and use this SWD port, 
what we're going to end up finding is that we're not able to do so because we are basically when we power up this guy is going to be wanting to constantly hold on and grab that clock line so what we can do we can underneath j11 on the other side of the board we can cut this trace we can then populate two pins here and then we can add a shorting uh, jumper whether we want to use the open sda or remove it if we want to use an external swd uh, debugger so pretty simple simple change just get an exacto knife cut the trace on the bottom of the board and then solder a couple jumpers in put a shorting bar and we now have control over which debugger we want to use. A couple of other changes that you're probably going to want to also make. The first is that there's two different resistors here. Um, what you'll find is that there's resistor R73 and R74. What we want to do is we want to depopulate those resistors. Uh, they're located just underneath um, jumper 3 and jumper 4 here. You might be saying, why on earth would I want to depopulate R74 and R73? Well, if we dove into the schematics for the KL25Z Freedom Board, what we'll find here is that R73 is once again acting as a short for this header. So we have no control as to whether or not the microcontroller is uh, basically pow powered up or how it's powered up. So you'll see here that there's a shunt resistor here. Um, Maybe I want to use that shunt to be able to measure current that the microcontroller is using. But with this zero ohm resistor in here, there's no way that I can measure it because I'm just measuring basically across a, a short. So by removing R73, this allows, and then populating J4, this allows me to, to decide whether I want to just directly supply power through uh, a short or whether I want to remove the header and measure the voltage drop across the shunt, which then allows me to measure the current that the microprocessor is drawing. Now if I'm trying to optimize for energy usage of the microcontroller, I don't want this here so I'm going to remove R73, got my shunt, and then I'm not going to short these. But I am probably going to populate those with some headers just so that if I then don't want to measure current anymore, I don't have that 10 ohm resistance on my high side, uh, high side power of the uh, development kit. Now then we also want to talk about R74. Why on earth would I remove R74? As you can see here, once again, R74 is acting as a, as a jumper. It's closing this, uh, this J3 header, supplying power to the OpenSDA uh, debugger emulator. It may be that if I'm trying to measure how much current this entire board is drawing, I probably don't want the OpenSDA debugger to also be powered at the same time because it's, gonna, it's, got, it's a microcontroller itself. It's going to be drawing some amount of current. I want it completely out of the loop. So if I go ahead and I remove R74, uh, the S open SDA debugger is no longer powered. I can populate two headers into the J3 connector. Once again, use a little shorting bar to decide whether or not I want to power the debugger or not. So these are just two very simple options. But in order to get them to work, we do have to remove two resistors. They're very tiny resistors. I think they're, what are they? They're 0603s or, or 402s. Um, so it's really easy, basically take a nice hot soldering iron, uh, get solder, bridge, create a solder short across the resistor, and then at that point hold the soldering tip to it, and then you can just move it right out of the way, right off the board, and the resistor is removed. Nice and simple, uh, not too big of a deal. Uh, so once again, we're going to remove those, they're just located on the top of the board, under J3 here, and under J4 uh, as well. Now you'll find R73 is just... It's in between J, uh, J4 and J11 on the development board. And then as I mentioned previously when we looked at the schematic, what we'll want to do is uh, we'll, we'll want to put in a, a breakaway header here for J3 and J4. J4 is going to be our shunt. Uh, so what we want to do is we don't want to short that out if we want to make current measurements. Instead what we could do is connect the iScope there uh, or maybe just some external tool that can measure current and uh, or that can measure voltage and convert it to a current for us and as you can see once again from the schematics that's R81 that's going to act as a shunt it's a 10 ohm shunt uh, you can look at the lecture one materials to see what type of voltages you'd expect to come across that shunt for for a given current as well all right so that's the basics of what you need to do in order to set up the freedom board for 
the low power measurement labs. What we're going to do is go and look at lab session one right now and get the development tool set up and uh, installed and get you on your way to viewing session two where we will start to talk about low power design techniques and software architectures. Thanks again for your time and attention. If you run across uh, any questions, comments, or concerns with making modifications to your Freedom Board or with the lab materials, please feel free to reach out uh, and contact me at jacobapeningo.com. I'm more than happy to answer your questions and help you uh, on your way to getting a, a nice tuned and optimized low power embedded system running. Thanks for your time and attention.